We are dropping these brand new limited edition US Arc Florida t-shirts. If you like one of these shirts, make sure you go to the website and pick one up. When you pick one up, you are contributing to US Arc Florida and you're helping us fight for our animals here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you may think this is a blue tongue cage, but I mean, you wouldn't be wrong. This is a blue tongue cage, a Nolis Barbados cage, and a Nolis Equestrius Portior. So three different species cohabiting all in one enclosure. Obviously, this is a massive enclosure. How big is this enclosure? Uh, it's eight by eight by four. Eight by eight by four. So eight foot tall, eight foot long, four foot deep. And guys, when I tell you that I didn't think this was possible, that's like an understatement because he has crown jewel anoles, the ones that are all the way up top, the blue beauties. You guys have seen those in the past in our, in our videos. But in the middle of this enclosure is where the Barbados tend to hang out. I know a lot of people will probably think they're going to be fighting and, and that it's going yeah. to be all chaos, but you have three different species in here together. What is What kind of behavior have you seen from them? I mean, it's just a sta this is a standard kind of zoo setup that yeah. zoos have been doing for 50 years. So as long as you pick the appropriate species, it's not a problem. Right. And we have no issues at all with these. So basically the, the crown giant and all, which is the podior, they live in the upper levels, although they will you know, come up and down on occasion. The Barbados tend to live in the lower, like three to four feet up because they're yeah. a twig and all. So that's kind of where they're found. And then the, obviously the blue tongues tend to live on the ground, but we've also had the blue tongues all the way up into the upper levels really? as well. Yeah. They're climbing the screen. Yeah. So basically what we do is we tend to, we do feed the blue tongues specifically on the ground, but we also feed the anoles a lot of fruit and right. we put it on the, on the shelves and they'll knock, if they knock any down, then the blue tongues finish it off and... So it kind of, you know, it's its own kind of biome thing where it, it's everything works well together. And have you noticed that, uh, like, how are the interactions between both different anole species? Uh, those two, there's not an issue. Like they, right. they don't even, they don't, even they don't affect each other at all. Yeah, they're they're both, you know, inhabiting different zones, so they're not right. really conflicting. And even when they do, I've I've routinely seen them all sitting together. Wow. Yeah, you'll have a Barbata and a, and a Podior or, or a Ludoglaris right next to each other. And um, as far as like watering goes for this, so we're, we're in Florida, so we obviously get to benefit from the sun and, and the weather that we have here, the humidity and everything. But what's the biggest challenge of keeping something like this outside? Yeah, I mean, it probably is getting the water into them that they need. So when yeah. we go through a dry cycle, we have sprinkler system that runs this entire length that's suspended in the air. Yeah. So we can turn it on and, and simulate rain anytime we want. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, honestly, the hardest part of this is really get finding eggs. Right. So we figured that out by stripping the floor bare. There's, you know, there's no... Just a screen? Yeah, so there's just screen. Yeah. And then um, we put potted plants in, and, and the anoles are 100% of the time lay their eggs in the potted plants. So we just check the plants every couple of weeks. Right. But that actually was the most challenging thing. Otherwise, you know, it's pretty simple. This is, this is one of the reasons why we set them up this way. It's kind of a, you know, they have massive cages. They can do whatever they need. They can choose whatever, you know, Yeah, micro they can get away from need. each other. Yeah. And the important thing to notice, too, is that it you could kind of cohabitate these animals because the enclosure is so big. So they Correct. could choose their own spots. Yeah. And like you said, this, you know, depending on the species, you could, some will stay up there. The Obviously the blue tongues tend to stay in the bottom. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you yeah. couldn't, you couldn't get away with this in a small tank or a rack right. system. I mean, right. you could cohab micro species for right. sure. I mean, it's done all the time. Right. And, um, but yeah, it's the same reason that zoos cohab lots of different things and they have a huge enclosure exhibits and then they've got, you know, all sorts of different things. But okay. it's but it comes down to choosing the types of things you cohab. They need to be somewhat, um, um, they need to inhabit different zones in the enclosure. They also need right. to be not super aggressive. You, do, you wouldn't want to put a predator. Right, right, like right. Everything right. in here is an omnivore, kind of an opportunistic feeder. All the anoles are mostly frugivorous. Yeah. The blue tongues obviously are like that as well. And, and you told me that with the anoles, you're feeding mostly fruits. Yeah. And then, you know, hornworms or superworms every now and then. And obviously there's roaches and stuff or, yeah, you know, wild anoles, stuff that small gets in anoles there. that get in there that they eat. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're about, I, I would say, 80 to 90% of their diet these days is fruit. Have you, have you noticed any uh, blue tongues eating the anoles or 
any other like I haven't seen smaller that. lizard species in there? No, I don't think they can catch them. No, yeah, <laughs> they're too <laughs> slow. True. Um, they do eat the wild roaches that get in there. Yeah, I mean they. There are certain times of the year where the roaches are. The wood roaches. We have a large wood, wood roach here that's just native and it lives in the ground. Yeah. But they bubble up in the enclosure. They'll actually they like the blue tongue enclosures because they like that 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 kind the of hide. the hide area. Yeah. So they'll congregate in there and then the blue tongues will gorge themselves on them when they have them so wow. there are times we come out here and we think each one of us is oh, is feeding them when the other one is and, and it's not that either one of us it's that they're eating roaches all the time wow. so um, yeah it was kind of a cool side effect of uh when we set them up so this is where the blue tongues will hide yeah. another thing i wanted to mention was everybody seems to say that you don't want to cohabitate blue tongues They'll tear each other's limbs off. They, they're super aggressive with each other. Correct. But here you are with, I mean, this cage has two, but there's other cages that have multiples, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So the main factor you would say is the space and how many hides they have? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, they need the ability to get away from each other and have their own space. And as long as they have their own space, they do just fine. Wow, look at this. That's a beautiful one. All right, guys, I hope you took all this information in and learned as much as I did in this tour. If you want to reach these guys, make sure you hit them up at Fairy Tale Dragons on Instagram and Facebook. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're great people, people, so they will love to talk to you, ask them all the questions you want, <laughs> and they'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs>